Hey guys, Mike Eccles here again. This lesson, lesson three, we want to talk about IoT and IoT versus WOT, Web of Things. IoT, if you recall, is the Internet of Things. So while IoT is about creating a network of objects, things, people, systems, and applications, WOT tries to integrate them into the web. So this WOT is a computing concept that describes a future where everything is fully integrated into the web, the internet, the web, World Wide Web. So uh, the computing concept is a part of a layers of activity that has occurred over the years where we now have this opportunity to integrate and connect these systems and devices. Such smart devices would then be able to uh, use the web standards. That's important because many of these devices were not built on one standard. So the web becomes the foundation. Uh, technically speaking, uh, WOT can be thought of as the flavors and the options of the applications and the application layer that is added over the IoT network's uh, application. And IoT is a broader term, and it's those devices that eventually connect through the internet but it's a wide variety of things. And we'll get into this and I'll explain it so it's clear to understand. So from a developer's perspective, the WOT enables access and control over IoT resources and applications uh, using mainstream web technologies, such as HTML and JavaScript and things that you know, PHP, Ruby and Rails, uh, the approach to building WOT is therefore based on RESTful uh, principles and RESTful APIs, which enable both developers and deployers to benefit from popularity and maturity of the web technologies. I mean, everybody uses the web, right? Still, building the WOT has various scalability, security, and other challenges, especially as part of a roadmap towards a global web of things, or WOT. So the main concept of a network of smart devices was first discussed in 1982 um, with a modified Coca-Cola vending machine at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Um, it became the first internet connected appliance and able to report inventory and whether newly loaded drinks were cold or not. Wow. We saw an extension of this with Xerox. Uh, there was a period of time when if I went into my copy room and there was a, an alarm or an issue on my Xerox machine, I might turn around and a Xerox repair guy was standing behind me because the machine had already alerted the repair person that it was having a problem, okay? So looking at this from a historical basis so we can start building on our knowledge. In 1991, Mark Weiser wrote a paper on ubiquitous computing, the computer of the 21st century. Some academic venues such as UBI Comp and PER Comp produce the contemporary vision of the IoT, the Internet of Things. This is how the ubiquitous computing was developed. So ubiquitous computing or UBI COMP is a concept in software engineering and computer science where computing is made to appear anytime and anywhere. In contrast to like desktop computing, ubiquitous computing can occur using any device. 
in any location, in any format. A user interacts with the computer, which can exist in many different forms, including laptop computers, tablets, terminals, and other everyday objects such as refrigerators or even a pair of glasses, you know, like Google Glass. The underlying technologies to support ubiquitous computing includes internet, advanced middleware, operating systems, mobile code, sensors, microprocessors, new IOs and user interfaces, computer networks, and many, many other things. It is most um, in its most basic sense, the Internet of Things refers to everyday objects and devices that are connected through these wireless networks. So, this idea of connecting things on a platform that allows them to exist together and talk to each other and coexist securely is this concept of Internet of Things. And then the web of things is the concept of using the internet, the web, as a background because the standards are already in place. So, more history. In 1999, Bill Joy gave the push towards IoT a big heave. The field gained momentum when he envisioned device-to-device -device communication as a part of a six webs framework. He presented it at the World Economic Forum in Davos in 1999. He later became the co-founder of Sun Microsystems. The term Internet of Things was coined by Kevin Ashton of Procter & Gamble, a U.S. company, later MIT's Auto ID Center. In 1999, though he prefers the phrase Internet of Things, um, there were other terms that came out. At that point, he viewed radio frequency technology, RFID, as essential to the Internet of Things, right? It's this one device being able to communicate with another device. And he said that it would allow computers to manage all individual things, right? So it's almost like you could put this radio connection onto any device and then it would be able to communicate out. Coming back to today, some examples of IoT. Uh, examples of devices connected to the Internet of Things can range from very simple things to extraordinarily complex things. Smart devices use a computing function that includes collection of data, the management of that data, and distribution of information. We now have smart meters, um, farming equipment, as well as health equipment that are a part of the Internet of Things. Challenges of the IoT have a lot to do with getting collaboration across all the different types of devices. They have different manufacturers, they're based on different standards, they're made in different parts of the world, and many, many other challenges. So at this point, when you need to incorporate these gadgets from different producers into a consolidated application or framework, you see the problems. You face trouble doing this compilation uh, where you need them to be able to talk to each other and associate in a common way. Uh, if you try to assemble these things, you start to see these issues. Um, Let's talk about double WOT, Web of Things. So the WOT, as we said, is very similar to the Internet of Things. Um, in some ways, they are drastically different. WOT was inspired by the IoT uh, as in common everyday devices are connected to the web and could communicate through various systems, but 
the way that they exist is different. IoT devices are anything, anywhere. And they, in some cases, have their own computing power. They're smart devices. Uh, the WOT seeks to use the web, the internet, and its framework as the connecting glue for all of these devices, including those IoT devices that we talked about. The reason is the web is already established as a system that can allow all things to communicate with each other, right? We have web protocols. The web may be used as a type of application where all things can communicate together in the most efficient manner. The web and the internet is um, previously settled framework. Nobody dis debates the protocols. Um, if someone in India develops applications for the web, and someone in the United States develops applications for the web, those systems typically work because everyone understands the framework and the protocols. The web or the internet is a uh, opportunity for the development of so many things. So WOT seeks to counter the fragmentation of IoT. Remember, IoT, there are these devices all over the place, they have the opportunity to learn and exchange data with each other and to then connect through systems which uh, correlate data without human intervention and puts that information out. So all of those sets of technologies, the Internet of Things, WOT seeks to make them all work together using the Internet as a background. It provides a standardized metadata or reusable technological building block. Right? So experts have a WOT goal to assemble easy integration across IoT platforms and applications and domains. Building the WOT also has various scalability issues, just like IoT, and these challenges will be solved over time, right? Um, there are a few organizations trying to build those roadmaps that are gonna help get us there. And then what happens is standards organizations work together to come up with agreed upon standards. So why IoT is about creating a network of objects, things, people, systems, and applications, WOT tries to integrate them into the web. Overall, terms such as M2M, machine to machine, CPS, or WOT um, can commonly and aptly be used instead of IOT when you're talking specifically. But for the most part, you will hear people refer to all of those things as the Internet of Things. But now you know the difference. This is Mike Eccles. Join me for Lesson 4, and I'll talk to you soon.